right now you are the chairman of Starbucks. You are, I think, the only black female who's the chairman of a major Fortune 500 company. Is that right? Correct. Is that surprise to you in this day and age that not one other black female is the chair of a major company in public company? Yes, absolutely. I think it's quite disappointing. And you see any progress in this area? In terms of being chair, I, I don't know. Um, there may be people out there who are headed for the chairmanship, but right now, just the idea that out of 500 companies in the Fortune 500, I'm the only one today, the second only in history, Ursula Burns was the executive chair of Xerox, that is just a poor statement about our society and where we need to be when it comes to race in this country and gender. You have been very active in trying to get more uh, African Americans on corporate boards. And in fact, you have a conference that you host. You've attended to do that. It. And you interviewed me, I yes. would say grilled me about uh, my own uh, situation. It wasn't that tough, was it? Uh, I got through it, but uh, your husband said uh, I did better than most. But in any event, <laughs> so why are you so interested in this area and what progress do you think you've made in getting? African-Americans on corporate boards? This has always been a big deal to us at Ariel. I think it has a lot to do with our founding as the first minority-owned investment company in the nation. Back in 1983, we'll be 39 years old um, in a month. And I think it also has a lot to do with the fact that we recognize the boardroom is where all the power is. And at the end of the day, and for, in order for a company to be world class, and that's what we aspire to invest in, we think you need all perspectives around the table. And you certainly need to understand all of the potential preferences of the customers that you have, the buyers that you have, what have you. And so at the end of the day, we think a diverse boardroom is essential to the well-being of a company and its stewardship. And I say this all the time, that companies that don't really understand this are committing corporate suicide. And so we advocate in a very strong way in terms of the companies that we own, the small and mid-cap U.S. names, for there to be diversity in those boardrooms. It may not be there when we first make our purchase, but you better believe we're going to be pushing and saying, you know, what is your plan for having a diverse boardroom? And at the end of the day, in the last... 39 years almost, we can point to, I think, somewhere in the name of 50 companies where we've had diversity added to the board.